Hi, welcome to the ASR 9000 channel. I'm Anna and in today's short video, we're going to look at the latest fifth generation hardware in the ASR 9000 product family. This includes all new route processors, new line cards that allow flexible combinations of a variety of port speeds and also two new chassis in compact 2RU and 3RU form factors. All of this hardware is built using the fifth generation ESR9000 silicon and there's a lot to see so I'll take you on a quick tour but if you want more details then the data sheets are linked below in the description. Okay, let's get started. First up, we have the new route processors, the RP3 and RSP5. The RP3 works in ASR 9912 and 9922 chassis and the RSP5 works in all the others listed on the screen. Other than the type of chassis that they are compatible with, the major difference is that the RSP5 integrates the switch fabric on the route processor board, making it a route switch processor and the reason for the S in RSP. The RP3 does not include the switch fabric because it's used in higher throughput chassis where the switch fabric is separated out into its own module. Also notice that both the RP3 and RSP5 come in two flavors, the packet transport optimized version or TR for short and the service edge or SE optimized version. Now what are the differences between SE and TR versions? When it comes to the route processor, the SE version has more RAM than the TR version, which enables more processing speed. But as you can see, both the RP3 and RSP5, whether SE or TR, have the exact same ports and LEDs on the front panel. Next, we'll quickly jump on to the line cards, which are way more interesting. Starting with the 32 cross 100 gigi port line card that's compatible with A99 type chassis. Notice again the SE and TR flavors. When it comes to line cards, the SE or the service edge optimized version gives you more TCAM space and better QoS scale than the TR version. With 3200 gig ports, this line card can support a throughput of 3.2 tera. All the ports support QSFP28. The first 21 ports can also break out into 425 gig or 410 gig ports. So this line card can support three different port speeds. Next, the heaviest hitter of the new line cards, the 10 cross 400 gigi line card can support a whopping 4 tera bits per second throughput. When QSFP DD is used, all 10 ports can support a single 400 gig port or 200 gig ports. If QSFP 28 is used, the ports can run at 100 gigi speeds. QSFP Plus allows the ports to run at 40 gig. On top of this, every port can also break out as 425 gig or 410 gig ports. Another major advantage of this line card is that MaxSec is supported on all 10 ports. The next three line cards take this multi-rate support to a whole new level. First are the two combo cards, the 2 Tera supporting 20 100 gig flex and the 800 gig flex cards. Like the multi-rate cards before, these also support a variety of port speeds, but now you have the flexibility of running the ports at a combination of different speeds. This is achieved because of the innovative slice architecture of these 5th generation line cards. Let's break down one slice to understand how to achieve different port speed combinations. Now, one slice, also called as port group, consists of one QSFP DD port and three QSFP 28 ports. Every port group or slice can support a throughput of 400 gig max. You can use this 400 gig all at once by using a QSFP DD in this solid color block port marked as port 12. In this case, ports 13, 14 and 15 are disabled because there's no bandwidth left in this slice. With the QSFP DD, you could also run the port at 200 gig speeds. Then there's 200 gig of bandwidth left over in the slice which means you can now use ports 14 and 15 each at 100 gig speeds using up the remaining 200. Now port 13 will be disabled when the QSFP DD port runs at 200 gig. This is denoted by the dashed line around it. If you run port 12 at 100 gig, then there's 300 gig left over in this one slice, which you can use to run port 13, 14 and 15 at 100 gig speeds each. So in this way, you can choose to combine different port speeds to flexibly utilize the slices 
400 gig capacity. Now that we understand the slice architecture, let's look at the two combo cards. The 2000 gig flex combo card has five port groups denoted by the five colors, red, blue, pink, orange and green. Each port group can support up to 400 gig and with five port groups you get a maximum of two terabits per second. In each port group, the solid color blocked port is the QSFP DD port and the other three ports are the QSFP 28 ports. They work in the same combination as we just saw. That is, if the QSFP DD port runs at 400 gig, the other three ports in that port group will be disabled. If it runs at 200 gig, then the port marked with the dashed line around it will be disabled. The other two QSFP 28 ports can run at 100 gig speeds. And all four ports can be used at the same time if running at 100 gig speeds. It's also important to note that each port group can be configured independently of the other port groups. So you can use a single 400 gig port on the red group while using one 200 gig and 100 gig port on the orange group and all 100 gig ports in the blue group. The 800 gig flex card works exactly the same but uses only two port groups for a total of 800 gig throughput. Notice that both of these flex cards come in the SE and TR variants and are supported on all A99 and A9K type chassis. Now the next line card is even more exciting because it is the only one that supports 1 gig port speeds in the 5th generation ASR9000 line cards. The 400 gig flex card has 4 port groups. Each port group can support up to 100 gigs of throughput for a total of 400 gig. Let's look at a single port group on this card. It consists of 11 ports, one QSFP28 port that can run at 100 gig or 40 gig speeds. It can also break out into four 25 gig or four 10 gig ports. Just this one QSFP28 port can give you 100 gig, 40 gig, 25 gig or 10 gig speeds. Then the next higher order ports, port 16 to 19 here, so 4 ports in total, can support SFP28 and either 25 gig, 10 gig or 1 gig speeds. The 6 lower order ports, ports 10 to 15 marked here, support SFP plus and can run at 10 gig or 1 gig speeds. By now you can imagine that a lot of different port combinations are possible with this line card and explaining all of them will take a video by itself. So leave a comment below if you would like that video and we'll make one and upload it for you. Alright, there are two more line cards newly added to the ASR9000 portfolio but they work only with the ASR9903 router. So now is a good time to look at the two new compact ASR9000 routers, the ASR9902 and ASR9903. First, the ASR9902 is a two rack unit router with redundant RPs. It's a hybrid chassis because the line card and switch fabric are fixed, not pluggable, but the two RPs are both field replaceable. So it's not entirely a fixed chassis, but more of a hybrid. You can see that the line card is marked with two colors. So that should tip you off that there are two port groups or two slices here. In total, the ASR9902 supports 800 gigs of throughput. So every port group can support 400 gig, again with a flexible configuration of different port speeds. The ASR9903 adds one more pluggable line card, also called as a port expansion card or PEC to the ASR9902's hardware configuration. So like the 9902, the ASR9903 supports redundant RPs, both field replaceable, a fixed switch fabric, one fixed line card, but this one can support up to 1.6 terabits per second, so double that of the ASR9902's line card capacity. In addition to this, the ASR9903 allows for one pluggable line card or PEC. You have two choices for this PEC, the A9903 800 gig or A9903 2000 gig PEC. Both of these line cards along with the fixed line card on the ASR9903 also use the slice architecture. So you can configure a variety of port speeds on these two. 
The ASR9903 is a 3 rack unit router and can deliver a maximum throughput of 3.6 terabits per second. So a lot of throughput packed in 2 and 3 RU form factors. In fact, the ASR9000 portfolio has roughly 100x the throughput supported from the first generation silicon to this latest fifth generation silicon while continuously reducing power usage. It's exciting stuff. With that, our quick tour comes to an end. Thank you for watching and don't forget to leave your comments below. See you in another video. Bye.